What's going on guys, Big Big Pete back with another video and if you didn't know, we do make custom arcades and well, check out the pedestal. Yes, we do take custom arcade options. This one's going out to a guy named Guy. Guy all the way out from I believe PA. He did a big request. He wanted a control panel on a pedestal and well, welcome to the family. A new arcade cabinet to the arsenal the pedestal now yes if you think it i'll try to build it and well we got a guy named guy all the way up from pa that requested a two player just a control panel but he wanted to spice it up with making it on a stand type of pedestal now as you do know i am also known as the led king i led everything so this is all led decked out we have rgb sound activated controller on this along with a white underglow right underneath the control panel now this control panel does come straight from Game Room Solutions. This is the two player control panel. He also makes one with the trackball, but this one is a two player control panel. Um, guy's special request that he wanted to buy everything from Game Room Solutions. So that was including the Mega Pack, which included the Retro Pie, which included the speakers, which included everything. Now off the bat, just to educate you, Ryan from Game Room Solutions suggested I don't do the entire Mega Pack and just get the Retro Pie. Um, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with it, you can check out the website, but the mega pack includes the speakers and the LED strip. It's really meant for a bar top arcade. Uh, Ryan did give me a heads up. He didn't really suggest it, but my customer said, Vic, I want it, I want it, and well, we did it. Also, but I do understand why Ryan suggests not the mega pack, because in all honesty, there's not that much room inside this control panel. For me to fit the speakers and the audio amp is nearly impossible. This right now, I'm, I'm even shocked that I was able to stuff so much into this control panel. Before we go into the specs and how we did it, we gotta check out the promo video. So again, a uh, guy messaged me on Let Go. He found my bar top. He wanted the bar top, but he wasn't a fan of the 19 inch screen that I put into it, the 22 inch. So he wanted to go a little bit bigger. He had, I believe, a 32 inch at home on a wall. He has a little bit of a man cave going on. Long story short, he wanted the bar top, but we changed his mind. I helped him change his mind. He really changed his own mind, but he decided to do a control panel. He liked the idea of the control panel. The only thing was that he didn't really want it to just be on a random desk we had to build him a desk so we did add the stand to it it is bolted down so this control panel does not move it is bolted down to this stand lucky enough for the little space that he has he gave me the dimensions we found a perfect table that will fit perfectly underneath it we decked it out let's get a little bit closer now again i never did this control panel i never experienced this control panel it's a very nice control panel in all honesty ryan gives you everything he gave me the team molding he even gave you the artwork included i think the control panel alone costs about 110 alone then adding the zippy uh led button kit was like another 60 bucks the mega pack the mega guts pack was like another 250 bucks but the 250 gave you the SD card for the RetroPie, it gave you the RetroPie, it gave you the strips, it gave you the LED, white LED I should say, and it gave you the speakers and the amp. So literally almost turnkey with the Mega Guts pack. I do understand why Ryan doesn't suggest it because in all honesty, this thing is packed. It's packed to the gills. The LED strip that Ryan gives you is really for the bar top. That's really meant for the marquee. Uh, he gave it to us, so we just wound up decking out the inside and that. It is bright as hell. LEDs always are bright. Uh, so big kudos to Ryan for giving us that, but it's included in the Mega Pack. I didn't get it for free. He gave it to you. The big thing to understand is the amount of room 
in this control panel. It's very tight. I'm literally surprised that I was able to get this as much packed into it. The only thing that's really not inside this cabinet is basically the speakers and our audio amp. I'm gonna take you guys closer in depth and into the cabinet, but just to go over a couple of things, I tried so many different configurations as far as putting the speakers inside this cabinet. It was just too tight. It's impossible. Not to mention that the cabinet's not built to have the audio. Like when you put speakers inside something in a box, you really need like the holes to hear the audio through. So I did test the speakers inside of this. Closing the control panel was horrendous. You couldn't hear anything. So we had to result in putting the speakers on the outside. That's my only little downside to this design. Um, I personally don't like speakers. I hate speaker amps. I do know for a fact that the RetroPie sometimes glitches out and doesn't remember to launch the audio out of the audio jack, which is why I always do my speakers to an HDMI TV. Um, that's my only downside. But again, with this, we had to put the speakers somewhere and that was the only aesthetic kind of way to do it. Not to mention Ryan gave us the four inch speakers that's included in the mega pack. And those are really meant to be like inside a bar top. So they're not that good looking. They're not attractive, but we made it work. We do have the amp built in underneath, but I'm going to flip the camera. I'm going to flip the microphone. We're going to go more in depth and explain a couple of things that I've ran into while building this. Oh, it's about again. This is my workshop. I mean, it is a disaster, meaning there's a lot of stuff going on. We got Waldo, but real quick, let's just take a look at the cabinet. I didn't measure the height of this, but this cabinet is literally right at my waist. So I would say literally, I'm going to take a video of me playing it, but this is perfect height as far as playing it comfortably, no arching the back. This is perfect height. Um, again, RGB out. We bought a 16 foot um, sound active RGB light strip. Uh, comes with its own remote. This is addition. This did not come with game room solutions. We do I like it sound active So with the flick of a button If I can find it there we go this now is sound active. So while playing Anything it's sound active. We could set it to fade my sensors in the back But again, let's talk about the stand first before we go into the control panel the stand again It's got two shelves RGBs all the way out underneath this is perfect. So you could put anything here and it'll be lit up. It looks great. One row here, one row here. Uh, guys set up at home, it's gonna go right against the wall. So we did light up the back. So right when it goes against the wall, the whole entire wall is gonna be illuminated. It's gonna look intense, it's gonna look amazing. Very nice setup. Again, simple stand. Um, going into now the game room solutions and what we incurred. This again is a two player control panel. Uh, this is the artwork from Game Room Solutions. He has a couple of samples. This looked great. I didn't really want the, the wording. Uh, the sample on the website didn't show the wording, only because I'm the type that I want to do like the load and the save states. But the wording's on it now. I forgot to tell Ryan not to put it, but deal with it. Uh, 20 button LEDs, chrome trim, zippy joysticks. Uh, you tell Ryan what colors you want. I always like my coins and my starts as white and yellow. My go is always green. Typically, people like the red and the blues. We're making another one next week that's gonna be Street Fighter style, so it's gonna be red, white, blue, red, white, blue. Very simple. Again, uh, two players. This, I believe, uh, left to right, I'm not sure, I think it was like 28 inches. Very comfortable as far as when you wanna play two players aside. Uh, again, as far as Game Room Solutions, he does give you the white strip, but before that, let's talk about the speakers. Two speakers on the side, again, this is really meant for a arcade cabinet. This isn't glamorous looking. It doesn't look great, but that's what the customer wants. We do have the audio controller here. Bass, treble, power, all there. We're gonna just kind of clean up the wiring a little bit. I'm gonna staple it. But LED strips are stapled, power wire stapled. Everything on this is good. Again, this speaker is really not meant to be outside of a cabinet, but it doesn't look that bad. The other difficulty, well, really on my end, we did light also the base on the floor. Uh, we had to put a little bit of a peg to make it levitate off the floor, so we did light up the base too. This thing is RGB'd out. Again, talking about game room solutions again. So this again, two-player cabinet. Um, the LED strip, he gives it to you in white. It's the cool white. 
It's the white, white, not the warm white. Really meant for the bar top. So uh, I already had the RGB, but he gave us the white. So I might as well said, so I said to myself, let me just kind of coat it around. So we did coat it um, going down, making sure we add a little bit of length on the bends. We just went around the box two or three times. This way, once it's closed, even the back here is kind of illuminated. It'll give a nice hue. Um, as far as the challenges, again, wiring is always wiring. I never seen anything more beautiful than wiring, but wiring is a little tough. That's what it is. The big thing that I notice is this. He gives you this power strip. Power strip is here, but the challenge on this power strip was lining this power strip up. I tried so many different ways. I put this power strip against the wall. I put it here, I put it here, but you have to also keep in mind that when you do drop this, our buttons will bump into it. So with a lot of trial and error, this is the perfect sweet spot. This is right in the middle, not really middle, middle, but it's off in the middle. It's right in the middle of this. Really when I build my cabinets, I like to put the Zinmo here right in the middle. So literally, if you see this, when I drop this, look at that, I'm literally clearing it. Boom. It is resting a little bit on the plug. There is one plug. There is one plug for the retro pie. The cabinet is left resting on that. I'm not gonna lie, this should really be dropped more, but it's fine. It'll work. Again, so that was the one big hurdle was this. This took me like three hours just to figure out the center point on this. Screwed down the side so it doesn't move. The other hurdle we ran into was the Zinmo. Zinmo I put right underneath player two joystick. With that, I needed to add an extension wire to one of our player one joystick inputs. It was just too short. Everything else worked out fine. You do have, again, a lot of excess, so we do always push it down. I dropped it. Originally, the first time I had the speaker amp here, when I dropped it, the joystick was rubbing against it. The speaker amp was impossible to put inside of here. Lastly, the Raspberry Pi looks great. Uh, this is the Pi 3 that um, Ryan gives you. He does have the SD card. I've never really seen this type of layout, but this again is Project HyperPi 2018. It's pretty nice. It's a 200 gigabyte SD card. Uh, so he does have a lot of games, including like the PC Engine and a couple of PlayStation games, but um, I didn't really count how many games there are, but it's a, it's a pretty solid list. Um, that's it. That's really it. Uh, he gives you the rocker switch. We wired up the strip right to the rocker switch. Everything is here. This is all set. The last little bit of details left is to put like my dollar sign and my start button here. Um, all in all, the two player pedestal is now ready for shipping out. I guess you could say we could ship these out. If you're in New York, you could pick one up. This is going to Guy out in PA. Guy, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for the challenge. And I just hope you enjoy it, buddy. People don't really notice the hard work that goes into an RK cabinet. The biggest thing that I always deal with is I always like to staple down everything, especially when it comes to LED strips. LED strips, after a time, they will come out. Um, stapling these LEDs are difficult, especially when you get into like RGBs. These are all stapled out. I have my finger on a staple. It's got to be tight. After a couple, after a while, the stickiness of the LED strip will go away. But the big thing is that you have to be careful when you do staple, you might go right through the RGB strip and you screw up the entire strip unless you know how to cut it and solder it. Um, but again, this is nice again, no matter what. Trial and error is not even the word, but there's so much trial and error to line everything up. Even this, this is the plug to my RGB strip. Look at this. I had to make sure that this is tilted correctly or else it would have rubbed up right against player two. See that? Look at that, literally. Let me zoom in. Literally clearing it. No BS. You literally just cleared it. Again, two player cabinet. We are ready. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And again, we'll be playing with Ryan's um, HyperPi image, but it's a nice image. I'm just very used to my image, but we don't knock anything. Again, two player setup. We are ready. This is out. Guy, come pick this thing up.